Arizona-based psychic named Yoda. Only occasionally was the silence punctured by a live album or a song on a soundtrack, until finally a new album was announced under the name Chinese Democracy. The problem with Guns N' Roses has always been that if there's no fact to pick up on, people make it up. People pick up on half-truths, people pick up on vague, vague whispers and blow it up out of all proportion. Now, GNR did announce that the new album was going to be called Chinese Democracy. They announced it about three years ago. Uh, my betting is there will be a new album and it won't be called Chinese Democracy. It'll be called something else completely. Now, we don't, no one quite knows exactly where the whole album stands. We've heard members of Guns N' Roses saying, yes, the album exists, yes, it's nearly done, yes, it's nearly mixed. I think they're jumping on hope more than anything else. They probably know as much as everybody else. They've contributed their parts, now let's see. This album lives entirely through rumor. I don't even know if it truly exists. I, it may have been glorified rehearsals in recording studios, for all I know, because I, I've heard the same thing everybody else has heard. I have also heard the stories and rumors from engineers and producers who worked on it. But the fact of the matter is the final decision is going to be made by Axel. He is still committed to his record deal, and so the label is waiting for the album, not too patiently anymore with the industry being in the state it is, and, you know, it'll come out when it comes, if it comes. What is it it's going to sound like, who knows, because we've had GNR play one or two tracks live before over the last seven or eight years, which may or may not be there. We've heard stories of going in an industrial direction, going in a, in a rock and roll direction. We've heard so many different stories about the way the album may or may not sound. M my feeling is there will be an album, and it'll get a huge amount of attention because GNR always do. It'll sell a lot of copies, but whether it'll sell enough to claw back the enormous fortune that's been poured into it over the years remains to be seen. I realize, I think we all realize that this is actual vision at this point, and he's gonna rise and fall on that vision, and whether he's gonna let anyone else in on it is anybody's guess. I think the reason why Chinese democracy has taken so long is because Axel is a perfectionist, and he keeps working on things and as people have quit he's brought new people in and they've had to redo their parts and I just think it's an ongoing process with them. Um, I know he's never satisfied but you know what most true artists aren't. They're never satisfied with what they do. Chinese democracy never appeared although rumors continue to circulate about possible release dates. Throughout 2000, the new lineup of Guns N' Roses did play several shows, and this was the first time that Axel had appeared on stage in eight years. Finally, they announced a tour for 2001, opening on New Year's Day at the House of Blues. I was at the House of Blues in uh, Vegas, at one of their shows anyway, and it seemed as if Guns N' Roses was back. I mean, even without all the other members, Axel was... Uh, a, right in form, he was great, you know, he was singing great, he was moving great. Uh, they did mostly the old songs though, they did a few of the new songs from the De Chinese Democracy album, but mostly it was the old Guns N' Roses stuff. It was just like Guns N' Roses in the old days, except it was a bit more polished. In the old days there was nothing polished about these guys, you know, they were rough, gritty, dirty. But it's a bit bit more polished, but I mean, the, the music sounded good, the production was good, the show was great. Yeah, actually, that was a really, really amazing show. They played till like, I think it was like 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I just remember when we walked out, and it was like bright daylight. Um, yeah, that show was, it was insane. You know, uh, the thing that got me, though, <laughs> was looking at them on stage, you know, with Robin dressed the way he is, then you had a guy with a chicken bucket on his head. <laughs> Okay, and you know, you had Dizzy, the rocker. Uh, Axel, you know, was wearing whatever Axel wears. Um, and then you had another keyboardist up above him. It just, the, the chemistry to me wasn't there. But the show was great. The following tour did not go according to plan.
Axel once again began turning up late to shows or cancelling them at the last minute, resulting in riots in both Vancouver and Philadelphia. The tour eventually collapsed and once again Axel Rose retreated from the public eye. It, it was a weird time at the beginning of the 21st century when Guns N' Roses suddenly went back on the road. I think everyone believed, well, that's obviously the prelude to the new album. And the gigs happened, and they packed the places out. Most people loved them and thought they were great. It was Axel and a bunch of hired hands. It didn't matter to people. Axel was there. The band sounded really good. And everybody felt that the vibe was back with GNR, that it was going to build up to this huge release, etc. Never happened, of course. Suddenly the gigs in America start to get cancelled because Axel's not turning up or turning up very late. The whole problem reared its ugly head once again. I think the pressure got to Axel, obviously. The rest of the band members were there. I mean, they were showing up, things were happening, and that tour was very popular. It sold tickets. People were ready to see them. But what happens? You know, Axel is back to the old behavior to the extreme. He not only shows up late, at some gigs he never shows up at all. I don't know what he's thinking. Uh, you know, you'd, you'd have to be a shrink and probably have him on a couch for 20 years to figure out what the guy's thinking. I have no idea what he really wants or what he's thinking to do that sort of thing because the consequences are so obvious, it's foreseeable that if you don't show up at a gig, there's going to be trouble and there's going to be problems. And so what kind of problems? Well, they, what, they have riots. He was really, really excited at that time. You know, he's telling me, you know, got the band together, everything's, you know, going to be happening. I was, you know, really amped about it because I was looking forward to going out on tour. Um, and then all of a sudden, it was gone. To this day, Chinese democracy has failed to appear, but despite the lack of new material and Axel's reclusive nature, he still remains one of the most intriguing and vital artists in the rock world. He's antagonistic, he's aggressive, he's streetwise, he's charismatic, he's charming, he's got an individual voice and a great insight lyrically and a, an appreciation of melody. And you put all those factors together and you may get somewhere close to the Axel Rose whom people adore on stage. Axel is probably one of the most generous, nicest people I've ever known, and he's also been one of the biggest assholes I've ever known, too. You know, um, but that's the way the guy is. I mean, that's the reason why you get the lyrics and the songs out of him that you do is because his personality is just, you know, it's all over the place. One of the reasons that, that he was so interesting to people is because he was essentially just kind of nuts, right? From a small town in Indiana to the front man in the biggest rock band in the world, Axl Rose is truly one of the most enigmatic characters in modern music.